eating is a pivotal part of improving your performance on the pitch and living a healthier life. We're joined today by Terence Boateng, a registered dietitian and exercise physiologist, and Julie Mancuso, a registered nutritionist and owner of JM Nutrition. They will go over a variety of topics such as what you should be eating before and after matches, how soon you should be eating prior to kickoff, what foods you should stay away from to maximize performance, and much more. My name is Julie Mancuso and I am a registered nutritionist and the owner of JM Nutrition. We are a nutritional counseling service with a team of registered dietitians and nutritionists. With me today is Terence Botang, a registered dietitian and certified exercise physiologist. So Terence, tell us why it's so important for an athlete, specifically a soccer player, to eat healthily. Well, eating healthy is extremely important for soccer players. It'll help improve their sleep, increase their stamina, it'll help with recovery, and it'll help keep that mental focus while you're playing the game. Terrence, tell us what a soccer player should be eating on a daily basis. That's a great question. So I think to understand what a soccer player should be eating, we should understand what food is to the body of an athlete. Our body breaks down food for energy so we can do things like walk, study, play video games, and of course, play soccer. So our body breaks down food into energy by making these three macronutrients or macros. That's carbohydrates, protein, and fat. So carbohydrates are that first primary fuel source that we need for high intensity physical activity. Things like sprinting, going for headers, slide tackling, scoring goals, all of that requires carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are foods such as rice, potatoes, pastas, breads? Exactly. As well as fruit like uh, apples, bananas, and kiwis will fuel that high intensity activity. The next macronutrient that's really important for soccer players is protein. So protein is actually the building blocks for our muscles and our organs, and it's essential for activity and recovery. So protein, chicken, fish, beef, eggs. Exactly, and some plant-based options as well, like soy, beans, and lentils. And that last macronutrient that's really essential and one of the things our body breaks down food for is fat. So fat helps with that long-term um, fuel source for those long games where you're starting to get tired, as well as for building hormones that run throughout our body. So fats, olive oil, uh, avocado, nuts and seeds, we're referring to the good fats, not necessarily burgers and fries. Exactly, especially right before a game. So Terrence, what should a soccer player eat before a match to have that maximum amount of energy, endurance and power? Well, if we think about what's involved in a soccer match, there's lots of sprinting, jumping, a lot of high intensity exercise. And the most important fuel source for that is carbohydrates. As a result, it's ideal to make your pregame meal at least a third or more carbohydrate. The next important thing when we're talking about fueling for soccer is protein. As we know, it's the building blocks of those muscles. And when we're doing a lot of physical activity, our legs are going to be burning throughout the game, our arms are going to be pumping, and we need to think about how we can recover after. So having some protein before will fuel that recovery. You can also make that from a quarter to a third of your plate. Finally, we always need to get some vegetables in. These have things like vitamins and minerals that are essential to keep you focused during the game and help keep you full from your pregame meal so you're not hungry by the time you start playing. So a good meal would look something like some brown rice or potatoes, making up most of the dish, and then let's say a piece of chicken or fish, and then you know some zucchini, broccoli, you know, asparagus to go along with that. Exactly, exactly. My go-to for sure is a little bit of fried rice with some chicken and some broccoli on the side. It help, helps me feel good right before a match. Fried in olive oil. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so we know it's important to have a good amount of carbohydrates, your protein and your vegetables before a match. But how soon before a match does a soccer player eat this? Is it an hour before, three hours before? Yeah, so ideally you'd want to have that pre-game meal about three to four hours before your competition. If you think about it, there's going to be a lot of rolling and sliding, and you don't want a whole bunch of food in your stomach while you're actually playing. 
but at the same time, you don't want to eat it so far in advance of your match that you're hungry during the game. If you're going to opt for a snack instead of a full meal before a game, you can have a small snack about an hour or two before, and as long as you're following some of these same principles of having carbohydrates and protein in your snack, it can be eaten as well. So something like yogurt and fruit, um, slice of toast with some natural peanut butter. Yeah, those are all excellent examples of a quick snack that you can have an hour or two before. Terrence, what should a soccer player eat after a game? Well, if we think about it, after a game, we put a lot of wear and tear on our joints and our muscles, and so we're going to need to recover that. So protein is going to be essential. Things like fish, chicken, beef, soy are all important to have for that recovery. Now, what happens if a soccer player has a game and then soon after has to play another game? Exactly. So like in, t in times like a tournament where you might play multiple times in a weekend, you really need to replenish with carbohydrates so that you have the fuel source going into the next game. If you play a game and you don't have anything or you don't have anything with carbohydrates, you've used all that high intensity fuel and you'll be playing a lot slower in the games to come. So that means then their endurance and energy uh, won't be as strong as it could be if they had that carbohydrates prior to the game. Exactly. So Terrence, let's say there's only a couple of hours between games mm -hmm. and a soccer player needs to refuel, but it's not enough time to eat a meal. What would be a good snack option you would suggest? Right, so if we're thinking about what we need to refuel, things like carbohydrates and protein, a small turkey sandwich or a snack-sized wrap with a little bit of chicken inside would be great to have in between those two games. What about something quick like a, a granola bar that's low in sugar? A granola bar could work. Um, it'll definitely provide you some carbohydrates so you can refuel for that high intensity exercise, but it is lower in protein, so it's not the best option, but if you're pressed for time, it is an option. Terrence, you're an athlete. Tell me some foods you might limit to maximize uh, performance. Well, if you think about it, as an athlete, we only train once a day, maybe once every other day, but we eat three or four times a day. And so you have a lot more opportunity to maximize your performance and recovery if you're eating healthy more consistently. That's a very good point. Yeah, so as a result, I tend to avoid things like fast food, you know, uh, fried chicken, burgers. It's not that you can never have them, but when I'm trying to really optimize my performance, I limit it as much as possible. And I'm sure those foods not only affect energy and digestion, but also the recovery component after a game that, um, you know, you want to feel at your best prior, during, and after a game. Exactly. After you've had that tough practice, you want to give yourself the nutrition required to actually get all of the benefits from that session. Interesting that you avoid or limit uh, fast food mm -hmm. to improve your performance and recovery. I was recently reading about Messi and part of his diet included fast food. Mm -hmm. And when he sought help from a nutritionist, he actually found that although he still played a great game, that I believe his recovery improved. You're right. Not only did his recovery improve, but he was actually able to play at his peak performance for much longer than expected. That's fantastic. So how much water should a soccer player drink on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, if you think about it, the water that we drink actually ends up being turned into the blood that our heart pumps throughout our system. So our heart pumping that blood is bringing things like oxygen and nutrients to our muscles so that we can do what we need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you're not getting enough water, your heart actually has to work harder to do the same functions that I could do normally pretty easily if you were hydrated. So then I would think that on match day, a soccer player would have to drink even more water. Exactly. So the amount of water that you're going to need to drink on, uh, during your game and on match day in general is going to depend on your size, how hot it is outside, how much you're sweating, what position you're playing. But in general, you should be thinking about hydration before the game starts. You want to go into the game well hydrated. So pay attention to if you're thirsty throughout the day and get water in you. Once the game starts, if you notice you're sweating more or if you have any signal of thirst, get some water in you. Really take the opportunity to drink. However, I'd only like to give a very specific number because some of us may go in 
overhydrated, where our stomach is full of liquid, and if we jump or if we run, we feel that liquid swooshing around. That means you're probably overhydrated and did too much. Rely on paying attention to your thirst, paying attention to your sweat, and take water as needed. Terrence, tell us when a soccer player should replenish with a sports drink that contains electrolytes. Right, well, electrolytes like sodium and potassium are actually our body's way of communicating between our brain and our muscles. And so if you run low on electrolytes, you'll find that you won't be as focused or you'll have a harder time moving your body. Generally, for activities that are less than two hours, like a 90-minute soccer match, you don't actually need to add electrolytes during the game. And that's because you get a lot of sodium and potassium from the foods we're eating in that pregame nutrition. However, if it's very hot outside and you're sweating excessively, or if you're um, a certain athlete that has very salty sweat, that may be a time where you're losing a lot of electrolytes and it might make sense to replenish. So if a soccer player does want to have a sports drink that contains electrolytes, I find that many of them do contain a lot of sugar. So how do you go about that? Yeah, so one way to kind of reduce the sugar in your sport drink is you can add half of it into your water bottle and then top up the other half with water. So it's a little bit diluted, but it'll still taste great and give you the electrolytes that you may be losing in those hot matches. As you can see, food plays such a huge role when it comes to sports nutrition, specifically soccer. Terence has given us some great tips, but if you are looking for something that is more personalized for you, feel free to contact us and we would love to help. Mm -hmm.